Welcome to The List, I'm Jesse Combe. And I'm Patrick McIntyre. And together, we're checking items off the ultimate automotive bucket list. From things that everyone should do... To things few have ever done before. On tonight's episode, we put ourselves in harm's way to test a theory when we escape a car underwater. And I compete in a demolition derby to let out a little aggression. Check it out. affair with cars my whole life. I build them in my shop and I race them both on and off road. I've spent years on the auto show circuit talking about cars, but now it's time to get behind the wheel and find the next adventure. Together, we're setting out to tackle all things that every car enthusiast should do. This is The List. something a little different than the items that we've checked off the list in the past. Normally we would show you something that every car enthusiast should do before they die, but today we're going to do something that we hope you never have to do, but if you do, you want to succeed at it. Now we're going to be using that crane and this car, which you may remember from a few of our past episodes, to see if we have what it takes to escape a car underwater. Now there's a couple different schools of thought on technique, and we're going to get all the facts and fundamentals and give it a try. Where we're standing here in Southern California at sea level on an average day is we're experiencing about 14.7 PSI. 33 feet of water is equivalent to 14.7 PSI. And we call that one atmosphere. That car door is about 1,700 square inches. For every foot of water, you're exerting about 850 pounds of pressure on that door. Oh my God. Good luck opening it. Okay, so you said there's two schools of thought here. There are. One is that we're gonna go to the bottom and mm -hmm. wait for the car to fill up with water. Oof. You're gonna breathe calmly and you keep lifting your head higher and higher as the water raises higher and higher. When you finally get that last breath, suck it all in, wait for the car to fill up the rest of the way, open the door and go for the light. The second school of thought is the OSCO method, which is open the door, remove your seatbelt, Grab your kids and get out. Mike, where is this most likely to happen to me that I'm actually going to find myself in the water? Well, annually, there are approximately 400 vehicle-related drownings in the United States. Generally, the large coastal states, California, Florida, the East Coast, that have a lot large bodies of water. A lot of these deaths can be attributed to uh, alcohol or fatigue. Now, do you want to tell us a little bit about your role and what we need to know to make sure everything goes smoothly? Well, I'm going to be the safety diver, and I'll be riding along with you in the back seat of the car there. But you're going to be breathing on your own. You're going to be doing most of this on your own. Just in case there's an emergency, that's what they brought me in for. What we've got here is a, an aluminum 80 tank. There's 80 cubic feet of air at 3,000 PSI. Plenty of air for what we're doing, no problem. Both your air supply for the driver's seat and for me in the back seat are being fed off of this one tank. What I have is the the primary regulator for you on a retractor. Now because it is on a retractor, you might have to cinch down on the mouthpiece a little bit. Go ahead and take a breath from it. <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing about dropping the car in the water is, is safety. In this case, we had to drain all the fluids out, pressure wash it. Uh, we want to make it nice and clean in there and nice and safe. Uh, so we removed all the things that don't need to be inside the vehicle. And we also put some extra holes in there for drainage. <laughs> I'm up first, first time around. They're gonna lower me into the water. I'm gonna let the vehicle fill up with water. I'm gonna get that one last breath, like this is some horrible accident in a submarine movie. And then I'm gonna hold my breath, wait for it to fill all the way up, open the door, and swim on out. Hopefully. All right, Greg. Okay, let's just go over the hand signals real quick. Okay, real quick. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. okay. Uh, this is a problem. Problem. And I want and my ass end up. up. Okay. Yep. Okay. I feel like every episode we do, I say I just want to make it out of this alive, and today that is more true than ever. All right, uh, I am in the car, and they're lowering me down into the water now, and it's just a waiting game at this point, just waiting until the car fills up with water, until it's okay for me to take the seatbelt off and get the out of here. Like, here we go. And drop.
first time when they lower you inside, once that water hits your body, it is a shock. I was not ready for the temperature of that water. How you feeling? I'm nervous. Yeah, it's okay. You'll be fine. Just, just remember, first of all, don't freak out. <laughs> Take that last breath, but there's plenty of time between the time that the door opens and that last bit of oxygen. But the door might not open right away. I had to pull it a couple times. I got nervous. I thought it was locked, so. Okay. You guys ready? Good? Okay, here we go. right back. Autoblog, the ultimate automotive resource. From the latest vehicle reviews, shopping advice, and ownership tips, to helpful apps, community forums, and photo sharing. Autoblog, where you can research, shop, and share everything on wheels. those days where I was actually scared. That's a very rare thing for me. All right, it's time for method number two, which is open the door as soon as I hit the water. The problem with this is, as you go down, there's more water pressure pushing against it, upwards of 1,000 pounds. So if I try and eke out, it might get my legs stuck inside there and I might get dragged down with it. We'll see what happens. Not as bad. I recommend that. Get that seatbelt off, open the door, and get out. All right, so now I'm gonna check the levels. I'm gonna let the water go up a little bit and try and open the door this time. See how long it takes before I can actually push it open. Fill up a little bit, get the seatbelt off. A little further, it's down under my feet. It is cold. I'm gonna let the water get almost up to my chest before I try the door. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try the door. That is not happening. Not gonna happen. I'm gonna have to wait. It's not gonna go.
I would have been dead. <laughs> that, uh, that didn't go as smooth that time. It was a lot of struggle. I was braced up against the, the center armrest, so I was pushing as hard as I could. I tried to put my foot into it. And then there was that moment of like, it's not happening. It's time to grab that air. The weight of the engine is pulling the front end of the car down, so the front end is filling up with water faster. I'm in the front. All the air is in the back of the car. I can't hold my breath that long. That is a very scary situation. If I didn't have air, I would, I would have been gone. What about like when you get down and like rolling the window down to help kind of let, like the car equalize faster? That would be great as long as the window has not been hit by the water. Once that water pressure starts pushing against the window, it's going to jam it up against the rails and you're not going to be able to operate it. You guys today are fully prepared. You have a window punch in your car. All so right. this is a last resort. You can't get the door open. You're going to take it and slam it right against the center of the window. That window will shatter and you're going to climb out of it. All right, so this center punch here is one of the only things on the market that is designed to break the window to get you out in a situation like this. I just want to see it in action. And since we're in a controlled environment, I'm going to protect my eyes from shattered glass, and I'm going to go ahead and use the regulator again so there's no freaking out. <laughs> I can tell you from experience, it works. And I got a little bit of a battle scar from it. As Soon as I put it up against the window, gave it a push, the mechanism inside popped. You could hear the window just shatter. I saw it just dissolve in front of my face. Got a little cut and then just a lot of water came rushing in. It's intense, but it works. I don't recommend going out the window though. So there you have it, a couple different methods for escaping a car underwater. We highly suggest to get out of the car as quickly as possible. Or if you know that you're gonna be in shallow waters, wait it out, hold your breath, and you'll be able to get to safety. And of course, if things get really bad, there's always the center punch as well to keep in the car. Now that we've officially checked this off our list, let's do some things that people wanna do before they die. Coming up, Jesse gets the chance to do what we've all wanted to do while sitting in traffic. And Patrick learns to never fall asleep at the airport. Now, as you can see, I'm at a county fair. But what do county fairs and cars have in common? The demolition derby. That's right, I'm here to check compete in a demolition derby off our list. up with Stan McDonald, better known as Max, who built out my demolition derby car, because in Southern California, he is the man who builds the best cars. Okay, go. It's a 1975 Buick Riviera. It's got the tow package. It's got a 10 bolt with 12 bolt axles. It's got 500 horse under the hood. She goes out here, stands in this thing. She's gonna find out what the world's all about when she hits somebody about 40 mile an hour. Between 1963 and 1999, they made over a million Buick Rivieras. But in 1975, they sold about 17,000. And I'm pretty sure this is the place they come to die. And our friendly competition. Now, it doesn't look like you have a lot of money in this car, but when I start looking at some of these parts, I can see that it starts adding up. How much money you got in it? Probably close to $10,000 in this car. 10 grand. 
prepare for something that looks like you pulled her out of a junkyard. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What words of advice do you have for me before I go out there and start smashing into other cars? Take your time. Think about what you're doing. It's like a chess game. Use the back end. If you see a, a wheel shot, quarter shot, take it. Don't hit somebody in the front end with this thing because bad things happen. People get hung and they'll leave you. They will not come and help you. Most every racer's a tech inspection, but what are they tech on this car? Safety. You don't want nobody getting hurt. Right, of course. But at the end, when it's down to the final four, I will hit somebody and I don't want to hurt nobody, but I will hit them. Well, that's the name of the game. It's a demolition uh, no. derby, right? I'm talking about hit them. Oh. <laughs> Up next, we learn the only rule in derby driving. is $2,000 today. If I end up going home with that, I am going to be laughing my way to the bank because there is no reason I should be winning this money. These guys have been doing this for so long. I mean, look at them. It's like on fresh meat. They are hungry wolves waiting to attack. The number one most important rule in demolition derbies is not to hit on the driver's door. If I see a blatant hit on a derby door, we're gonna black flag you. The rules are simple. Rule number one, don't hit the driver's side door. Rule number two, don't hit the driver's side door. And by the way, don't use the driver's door as a shield either. I'll see guys go out there and they're throwing the driver's door. Somebody's got them, man. Coming across the arena and they slide up. Ah, driver's door, can't hit me. Man, I'll tell you what, that is a hen house way to keep from taking one you know you got coming. Any new drivers here? Okay, now the rest of you know who they are. All right, you guys, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody coming out. God bless you, be safe. Yep. Now, what kind of stuff goes on when it comes to announcing for a derby? Everything. You never know what could happen at one of these things, so you have to be prepared for anything. Fires, rollovers, wrecks, fist fights. What is it that you love so much about these events? The unpredictability. That's what I really love about it. It's different every single time. Someone different wins, something different happens. It's adults bashing into it each is, other. It is, right? It's adult bumper cars. It is. How can you not like that? Demolition Derby has been the same since day one. No innovation here. Steel on steel with the goal of last man standing. because one of the cars was on fire. So everybody shuts off their cars and sits and wait until the officials give you the green light again. Literally, as soon as you start the cars, I had two cars crash right into me. Oh, that was me. Our lady driver is still mixing it up at number 71. Oh, that's got to smell good. That is just a little steam. I think 71 is still running. She just can't get freed up. Officially out. We got one, two, three, four, 
Five cars left. 51-50. He must not like 7M because they are getting him right now. All right, you guys, we're down to the final two. Oh! It's over! So we are going to call it an official tie. Just went and said thanks to all the drivers. Um, looks like I lost my bumper. Got a little new hood ornament. This whole side is not as near as pretty as it used to be. What happened is I got stuck on another car and the officials told me that I timed out. From the Riverside County Fair, I didn't get the results I wanted, but I'm pretty sure I can check compete in a demolition derby off my list. Being underwater was fun to try, but nothing that we ever want to have to do ever again. No, and I gotta say, those guys in the demo derby, they were really gunning for you. I bet it's because they just wanted to be on television. Yeah, it's probably true. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.